92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and audio and soon-to-be video on RTC Channel 4, and that's why Scott's here. Hey, Scott, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Hey, thanks for coming back to see us. It's a pleasure. Yeah, you uh, dress differently each time I see you. <laughs> Today was whatever works. Long, <laughs> I see. Long day tomorrow. I understand. Time now for our community foundation program. Brian Johnson joins us in the studio. And uh, one thing about it, Brian, you, of course, you have a special guest, but uh, you also have a new location. We do have a new location. So um, if folks have not stopped by um, 227 East 9th Street, um, where Kelly Real Estate where, used to be, where Kelly right? Realty used to be, and um, we've enjoyed being there um we have a sign out front so we have so now we can put announcements like radio program coming up this morning so i don't know how many Excellent extra idea. people we have tuned in because oh, of that tons. right now so but um yeah it's good location so if, if folks have not been by and want to stop by for the tour we'd love to have you stop by um say hi to us great so, um a good location for us so well we got a few things going on um it's hard to believe, but school starts here closely. A week from tomorrow. And so what does school mean for us? Well, part of that is scholarships. Sure. Um, it's not available yet, but starting August 1st, the Lilly Scholarship will be available on our website, nicf.org. Talking about the application for The application it, right? for okay. that. So that, um, of course, a, a couple of years ago, the Lilly Endowment um shifted the time frame on that from spring to fall um, selection process so um, that way it gives the students a better chance to be able to be more prepared if they if the financial aspect is is helping them select a college okay. um, if they know ahead of time then they can make a selection based on where they really want to go versus where they can afford so um, that's been a good process for us to to have that happen um, in the in the fall now so um, august 1st the application will be available um, the deadline will be september 3rd um, i'd encourage students start thinking about that application now if you're planning to apply for that because it does require um, some information from um, not only you but from counselors um, letters of recommendation um, and some different pieces of, of information that um, may take a little bit of time to get pulled together. And that's so a big one, right, Brian? It is a big one. It right. provides it provides full tuition. It doesn't provide room and board, but it um, provides full tuition and a nine hundred dollar a year book stipend. Okay. Um, for up to four years for a student. Um, part of the requirement is that the student has to be seeking a four year degree at a college or university in the state of Indiana. Um, so, um, but other than that, it's open to any field of study, any, any school throughout the state. Um, and so it's, it's neat to see, um, one of the things that Lilly Endowment has really, um, encouraged and helped with is to raise education levels. And part of how they do that is through this Lilly scholarship. Um, so some things that are important in that, obviously academics are part of it, but that's only a piece. Um, things like community involvement um, are a big piece of this scholarship. Um, a couple of written essays, some letters of recommendation from um, different folks throughout the community. Um, so really our, our committee is, is looking for somebody that's academically capable, but also has been involved in things, has been um, doing things in the community, and um, whether that be work or volunteer experience or a combination of both. So um, really a well-rounded individual okay. for that. Good. So again, the application will be available August 1st, which is next Wednesday, um, due September 3rd. Um, just kind of an update. We've been celebrating our 25th anniversary. Um, part of that has been giving away some pop-up grants. It's been a really fun process when we call somebody and say, hey, <laughs> we're going to show up at this time. Can you be around right. and be available? And we have a good surprise for you. Um, recently, we've been able to award um, pop-up grants to the Akron 4th of July Committee. Of course, that's a big, big event every, every year, year in right. Akron. Um, the Akron Library um, and then the Fulton County Public Libraries, which include um, Abenabi, Fulton, and Rochester Libraries, and also um, Fulton County 4-H. Um, we just enjoyed the fair and... 
we're able to see a lot of neat projects that 4-Hers do. Um, it's a wonderful program that helps really teach some good life skills to the students that are involved in that. And so um, we've been excited to be able to encourage organizations that are doing good things, um, helping them do more. And, and stay tuned for, I guess, in the radio, you'd say you stay tuned for we more do. details. That's right. Um, some do. more pop-up grants will be coming shortly. So um, another thing as we talk about the start of school, um, preschool scholarships. Okay. Um, we've been able to give out, this will be our sixth year, giving out preschool scholarships. Um, we have applications available. Um, I'd encourage folks, if you um, are looking for a preschool, um, there's a number of good preschools in our area. Um, check out preschools if you need help finding one. We can probably get you um, in contact with one of those um, preschools in the area. I know I heard earlier on the news, um, Superintendent Vance talking about them opening a new preschool um it that's in addition to the preschools that we already have so um we are seeing more and more need for that so that's um, not taking away from the local pre from the currently existing preschools that's adding more capacity for our community so if you need help finding a preschool let us know we can put you in contact with the ones that we're familiar with um the process for a applying for one of those at those um, scholarships um, you'd actually work through the preschool they have our scholarship application um, they'll help you through the process and be able to um, get you set up with that so um, they are income based um, but if there's a financial need there we're probably going to be able to help students out so we want to be able to help remove that financial strain um, from the um, possibility of going to preschool okay very good so neat to see that and then also um, i heard on the radio this morning that um, the foundation is giving a grant to the times theater yes indeed. Um, we've been excited that's been a project that's been going on for a number of years kind of quietly getting some momentum built um, we recently ate able to award a planning grant of $34,425 to the Times Theater Group. Um, and this is going to help them with some architectural and engineering plans, probably all the fun stuff, um, getting an idea of what they can do with the building. Um, we were in the building a couple days um, ago and we're able to kind of see some of the things that they've got going on. It's, it's neat to see the history of that building and see what the potential is to be used for so um, we're looking forward to see how this this happens so um, they've got a group of folks like i said have been working on this for um, probably four or five years um, and so we wanted to help them get that process started the first part of that process is getting an idea of what it's going to take to get the theater into shape to be able to use for community events. That's going um, to give them some momentum, it, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And, and part of the process is, is with architectural drawings, people ask, well, what are we going to use a theater for? Well, this will kind of give you a visualization right. of be able to see, hey, these are the kind of functions that we can have here, or these are some of the plans that we can, we can make happen here. So we're excited to, excited to see that um, happen. And, and as we talk about downtown projects, um, that's one that always comes to the top. We always get questions about, well, what's going on with the theater? Or is there a potential for something happening there? So um, we're excited to be able to help with this project, thanks to the group of volunteers that have, have been working on this. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing what this turns into. I drive by the by the theater every at least twice a day on my way to work and way home. Sure. And um, it'll be neat to see what that turns into for our downtown and really be kind of a kind of a capstone of what what can go on in our downtown community. So um, again, Kurt, congratulations to the Times Theater um, folks. If, if folks are interested, and I'm sure they can probably always use more volunteers, um, different ideas um i'm sure they'd they'd love some additional help because that's really what it takes is folks that have a passion for it to get involved and that's what this group has started with the theater and it's interesting you had mentioned that on friday's first federal program coming up this week we'll have 
Tanner Lee in the studio who is on that board, but he's also bringing yeah. in the chairman and the vice chairman of the yes. theater thing. So we'll have a lot more discussion. We'll find out a lot more about their plans and what yeah. what those all entail. But uh, this is a good start for them. It, it is, and it, it'll be exciting to see how this project starts. Um, I know there's, there's a lot of work involved in it, but... Um, everybody has to start somewhere right. this is this is going to get the group off to a good start so exactly. we're excited to see how this how this process develops in the next few years um and what a it, it's neat to see some other communities that have done this with theaters and really the neat um, additional opportunities for entertainment mm -hmm. um and it affects not only just folks coming to the events at the theater but also um really our whole downtown exactly kind of a, right kind of a spot to right. end up and then end up in other places downtown whether it be restaurants shopping sure. um things like this but this um could really bring a lot to our downtown so we're we're excited and and um looking forward to see the plans and the ideas that come out of this process so okay good well that's 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 our our big news for All the right. day um today we have with us um kennedy nabalski um, Kennedy has been interning with us this summer. Welcome, Kennedy. Hi. Um, part of what um, Lily Endowment has done the last few years is provide community foundations with some funding for interns to help us um, do some extra things, whether it be marketing, some different things in the community, um, some different projects. So, um, I guess, Kennedy, start off by maybe introducing yourself. Tell us where you went to high school, um, where you're going to college, some of those basic things. Okay. Well, I'm Kennedy, like you said, and I graduated in 2017 from Tippecanoe Valley, and I will be a sophomore at Purdue University this year. I am studying corporate communication, and I'm also getting a certificate in entrepreneurship and minoring in dance. Excellent. All right. So we, we have we have talent yes, in the room do. today, I <laughs> guess yes. we could say. Singing so, and dancing. Singing and dancing. <laughs> I don't sing. <laughs> I don't sing. Just dance. <laughs> well, tell us maybe a little bit about um, some of the things that you've been able to help us with this summer um, at the foundation. Um, some of the things that we've done, um, we've gone like and done the pop-up grants, which that's awesome. I love seeing everyone's expressions when we do that. Um, one of my favorite things that I got to be involved with was the scholarships this year. And I had the privilege to present a few scholarships at um, Tippecanoe Valley. So it was crazy to see how I received a scholarship a year ago and then the following year I got to go and um, give them out. So it was fun seeing people that I know receive scholarships and um, to help with their college sure. and stuff like that. Well, and, and you mentioned scholarships. Um, one thing that we've done the past few years, Tom, is every every year about this time we have the interns come in and kind of tell us something that they learned about the foundation that they didn't know. and. Because most of the time they know that we do scholarships right. because often they're like Kennedy and have received scholarships. But I guess my question to you, Kennedy, would be maybe tell us something you learned about the foundation that you didn't know that we did before before you were an intern with us. Okay. Um, so I really only knew about scholarships. Um, I knew about the community foundation other than scholarships just because of who my mom is and she'd always talk about how she had a meeting with Brian or something like that <laughs> and so I knew who Brian was but I didn't really know anything so I um one of the biggest things I learned was how we grant out to the community and how we um help the community out and um making that almost a more functioning place to live and stuff like that and and maybe something that surprised you that you didn't know about the foundation um i guess something that surprised me was i really didn't believe you when you interviewed me for my <laughs> internship how much interaction we have with the community and at least every hour of every day we have someone coming in throughout the community to come in and talk to us or we're on the phone with someone so that was, it's really cool to um, see how we interact throughout the community with others. 
And this isn't a, a Fulton County thing, but it's a Stark County thing, kind of related to preschool. Um, you had an opportunity to go to a kindergarten countdown. Maybe tell us a little bit about that experience. Okay, well, I had always um, loved working with kids, believe it or not. My mom was a teacher, so I was always involved with her, and now she's a principal at Akron, so I'm still involved with little kids. I was also a cheerleading coach throughout high school, and so I didn't, wasn't really scared to go like <laughs> some past interns I've heard have been, and it was a really cool experience to see these little kids who don't know very much um because they didn't go to preschool beforehand so they're getting ready to go to kindergarten and it broke my heart some of the things that the kids said to me how they wanted me to go home with them they couldn't wait for me to, to be they couldn't wait for me to be their teachers next year and i'm like sorry i'm not gonna be your teacher and but it was a really cool experience and it was very um eye-opening and heartwarming and it, it's kind of neat to see um, how we've been able to help with that program. Um, like I said, that's a, a Stark County program, but um, similar to the preschool mm -hmm. program where helping kids get started on the right foot. Um, and so it, it's neat to see how that has grown and, and helps kids kind of get that base for their education exactly. starting off. So, well, maybe... I don't know if there's anything else that you learned this summer that you'd like to share with us or been involved with. Um, well, I was trying to figure out what my favorite project was this morning, and I couldn't really figure it out. But then I got to thinking, I asked Brian if a pop-up grant could be involved, and he said, sure. So um, I chose that one of my favorite um, pop-up grants that we've given, given out was to the Akron Fourth of July Committee, just because... My mom lived in Akron her whole life, and then we moved back to Akron when I was in fourth grade. So okay. I was um, younger, and so the 4th of July has always been a part of something that my family gets involved with throughout um, in the summertime. So it was really neat to see how we um, gave this grant, this pop-up grant out to the 4th of July committee to help them with something that has always been a part of my life. Excellent. And it again, we go back to... Um, those volunteers that make sure. things like that sure. happen. Yeah. Sure. Um, that wouldn't, the 4th of July, of course, Akron was, Akron's history is being founded on 4th of July and it, it's something that's important to the community and um, it's it's neat to be able to support things like that. So, Kennedy, would you say, uh, would you recommend being a foundation intern to other people? Um, for sure. It's definitely um, opens your eyes to the things that happen throughout the community that some people don't even know about and it's nice because i'm younger and so they we need younger people throughout the community to see how the community works and how to help the community grow so when older people um when brian gets older and he has to retire we need younger people to take <laughs> over so it's very nice to learn how the community works and so i would definitely recommend an internship here yeah. And it's always it's always fun for us to have folks that are younger involved sure. and kind of say, sure. hey, have you ever thought about this? Or this would have really helped me. Or a lot of times Kennedy knows knows individuals that we make contact with. She exactly. calls, calls her friends and says, hey, I need need some information about this. And so it's, it's neat to see because part of what we want to do is be able to serve the whole community. And that's... An important part of that is having having folks of all ages involved um, with the foundation. Excellent. So, well, as we wrap up, any anything you want to say in closing today, Kennedy? I don't think so. <laughs> well, when do you finish up? When do you wrap up your internship? Um, next Friday is actually my okay. last day. Yeah, and then she has to go back to school. Okay. Yeah. So, but I'd like to say thank you um, for helping us this summer. It's been fun having you around and and being involved. If you guys keep an eye on our Facebook page. That's something that she okay. didn't mention, but Northern Indiana Community Foundation, a lot of the stuff that's been popping up in there recently, Kennedy has had her hand in um, getting okay. those things organized. So encourage folks to like us if you have not. Um, and now Kennedy and wasn't the only intern you had, right? Kennedy was not. We okay. actually had one in each, each county, okay. um, one in Miami County, one in Stark County as well. Um, and again, that those are that's made possible by Lilly Endowment, sure. um, providing us some extra funds. So, um, it's it's been fun to have, um, and part of the requirement is that they're current college students. Okay. So somebody that has completed 
their freshman year and has not graduated yet. Um, but Lily has been doing this for about the last seven or eight years. Um, and it's really let us do some extra things. So you've probably seen our Facebook page be more active the last few weeks. Okay. Um, and some different things around the, the community um, happening that either have happened or are in the process of happening because we have some extra extra help and um, extra folks to get some word out and okay. and now we have now we have an ambassador in kennedy that can <laughs> tell folks about the community foundation as she goes back to school Perfect. and and different the different circles that she runs in so uh, one of our other interns is actually from purdue oh, and very so good. it was kind of cool because we got t connected and we're in the same major so we had a class together last semester, and we didn't even know it. So we have a class coming up this semester, okay. and so we're like, hey, we actually know someone. We can sit together. Good. Yeah. So Good. Ne need to have that. So, yes. And so, well, thank you, Kennedy, for joining us today and for um, helping us this summer. Um, we've enjoyed having you around and uh, appreciate what you've been able to help us with this summer. Well, so, thank you for having me. Yes, and, <laughs> and good luck as you go back to school. Thank um, you. We'll look forward to hearing of all the successes that you have um, this year through school. So, well, just a, a couple of quick reminders. Um, preschool scholarship applications, if you have not registered your child, um, get with the preschool. Um, we'd love to be able to help um, with the tuition if that's that's okay. a need. Um, again, congratulations to the Times Theater folks. I'll be looking forward to Friday morning to hear, um, hear them talk about some of the plans that they have. And then um, also the Lilly Scholarship application will be available next Wednesday, August 1st, um, deadline September 3rd for that. So um, if you have questions about um, what we talked about or need more information or just have some sort of idea you want to run by us, um, we're always happy to um, talk to you. You can find us online, nicf.org, um, like our Facebook page, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call. Our phone number is still the same, 224-3223, okay. or stop by our new office at <laughs> 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. Brian Johnson, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for sharing that with us. And Kennedy, nice to have you in the studio this morning. Thanks, Tom.